Ava, are you planning on coming to my wedding? With a face like that? Just like always, you're coming back to be rude to me even more. I do plan on going to your wedding. And congratulations on getting proposed to. You are family to me now, so it's pretty obvious that I'd be going to see your wedding. And I was the one that showed you the location of where you're planning to hold your wedding, right? And so what? And the only reason you showed me the wedding hall to have a wedding is because you do a business with that place. So stop trying to act all cool about doing that when it was nothing more than you helping them make more money. I'm not trying to get some sort of praise from you or anything. I was just stating that I know where the wedding will occur. And another thing, at the moment I'm the one that's paying for your wedding until you have the money to pay me back, right? So just with that alone, I'd love it if you could thank me or something. And I told you I will pay you back, so don't worry. Others will be giving me money as gifts for my wedding, so just wait until I get all of that. And for the savings I have right now, they need to be used for other purposes, so I can't repay you with that. And have you told Drew about that yet? Drew told me that your husband would be the one to pay for things like that, but that's all a lie, right? I'm not lying about anything. I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't worried about anything regarding me. That's just what I want Drew thinking for a little while, so don't do anything unnecessary that could make him think otherwise. Anything unnecessary? Him and I are married now, Evelyn. I understand that this whole event is for our family and we wouldn't want to make any issues, but I'm still not fully sure whether you're up to something else behind all of our backs right now. Well, Ava, you're a pretty ugly woman. Wait, what? Do you think that it's okay for someone who's ugly to come to my wedding? I want to make sure that my whole wedding is 100% perfect for all my guests. And if someone with the looks of you came into it, then the whole event would be ruined. How much longer are you going to keep making such rude comments about my face being less than ideal for you? I guess I can expect that sort of stuff to continue from you, though. Do you tell Drew about all the things you say to me? Have you told him that you're not inviting his wife to the wedding because she's ugly. If I said that to him, I'd be hurting his feelings, so I'll never tell him that. Of course, telling him the truth would be a lot easier. You should never say something like that, though. If you're worried about hurting someone's feelings with the things you say, then why do you keep making rude comments about me? Up to now, you have hurt my feelings plenty of times. Well, because you've helped out with my wedding and planning it out, I'm thankful. But because of your less than beautiful looks, I want you to stay away from it. You are being awful right now, Evelyn. You can stop trying to tell me to stay away, all right? Go and tell your brother all these sorts of things and see what he says. I tried warning you plenty of times not to come, Ava, but you never headed any of them. And you probably just thought that I was bluffing. If this has helped you understand that you're an ugly and depressing woman, then get up and go home. I've had enough. You are worse than I thought. You pushed me into that fountain at the wedding reception all because you hate the looks of your brother's wife for no good reason. That right there has pushed me to my limits with you. And I told you that all ugly people were to stay out of my wedding. Hurry up and go away. You're dripping wet now and I don't want you causing any slip hazards for my invited guests. I can see that you think you're all that because it's your wedding day and you want me to be gone. But do you understand just how regretful you're going to be because of all that you've done to me? Regretful? I'll never regret a thing about today. All I did just then was help get rid of an ugly duckling. Everyone knows that I wasn't the right for doing that. Well, if you're so confident in that, then that's great for you. I can see now that no matter what I try and say to you, you're never going to actually think about it. I'm giving up on you now, you... you... you old, hopeless hag! Excuse me? Why are you being so rude to me now? Because after all this time, I'd been so considerate of you when you've been rude to me. You are my brother's older sister, after all, and I tried my best to just ignore all the hateful things that have come out of your mouth. But I seriously cannot handle you anymore. Well, I've been trying my best with you. How? I've actually never really thought of you as part of my family, even after marrying my brother. And because you came into my wedding today without considering the consequences, I had to push you into the fountain. There's no way that someone dripping wet would be allowed to stay here, so hurry up and go. Then I will go. See ya! Never, you gross loser! Going as far as you have has really shown me your true colors. But since you still can't seem to realize the consequences of all this, 
then I'm just going to shut up and leave. But don't you ever forget that this wedding hall was all put together with the help of the company I work for. Huh? And what does that have to do with anything? You'll know soon enough. <laughs> Hey Eva, can you reply to me please? Right now they're saying that this whole wedding is being cancelled and have started to clean up. Well, that would happen. I told them to cancel it before I left. Huh? What the heck are you talking about, Eva? If you let them keep doing this, then my whole wedding is going to be over. And that's just too bad, right? But if you think about what you've done to me, it's only natural. You cared way too much about your little brother's feelings, and to make sure that your wedding that you haven't even paid for yet was perfect, you pushed me, the one paying for it, into that fountain. None of what you'd been doing was okay. Hold on a second. There's no way you can just cancel my wedding while it's still going on, right? Right now my husband is pissed. Is that so? I'm sure he would be when he has no clue as to why this is all happening yet. <laughs> but I have nothing to do with the aftermath of all this. So don't bother me with it. You can't just run away from this. Well, I am a stranger to you, right? You told me that you don't regard me as family. And for a while now, I had been worried a lot about Drew. But I can no longer think of you as being family to me. Come back here. What? Please, come back here so that we can all avoid being embarrassed. So please come back. If we can't get this wedding back on the road, then I'll be in hot water. Hurry up and get back here. Explain all of this to my husband for me. I'm going to just ignore that very selfish request of yours, okay? Huh? Why? Also, as for the money you had asked me to give you to pay for that wedding, I'd like all $50,000 of it back very soon from you. What? Huh? That's what it cost for your wedding and all that came with it. And you asked me to pay for it at first and that you'd repay the $50,000 to me after the wedding. So give it all back to me right now. I want it. And now that your wedding has been cancelled, you have to pay the cancellation fees as well. I'm not going to be the one to pay those fees, but I still want my money back now. And I will not let you run away from me. There's no way I can give you all of that money right now. Are you being serious with me? Why wouldn't I be you, you filthy grandma? Huh? You had no right calling me ugly and pushing me into that fountain when you had to borrow money from me to have the whole wedding. I've really been thinking about what could have been wrong with your head. But anyway, I want that money now. But I don't have that kind of money on me right now. And also having my wedding cancelled on me is not okay. I had finally made it into my wedding day and now it's all being ruined. You must have forgot all the strings I had to pull to allow your wedding to be held here. I mean, if you knew that and still pushed me into the fountain, then you must seriously need some mental help. I knew about all of that. Why would I have ever forgotten about something like that? But I thought that that would have had nothing to do with me. I can thank you for getting me this beautiful place to have my wedding and all, but I never thought you could easily cancel the wedding on me as well. I just never thought that you'd actually do something so horrible to me. Well, it had to happen after you decided to get me drenched while in my dress. I'd stop trying to make excuses for all of that now, okay? You should know by now that this is all due to you, right? I'm tired of texting you about this, so just come back here, please. If you want me to apologize for what happened, I'll apologize. Really, what do you want to happen after all of this? Huh? What do I want to happen? I'm just asking that you come back here and make things right for me so that we can continue the wedding, right? So you can stop acting like a crybaby and come back here. I'll apologize if that's what you're wanting. You are actually brain dead, you hag. <laughs> huh? Brain dead? Don't you think you're going too far? Even though you're the one that's been taking it too far for a while now, calling me ugly and a loser all the time has driven me up the wall. If you have the time to be calling me names all day long, then maybe you had the time to rethink what you were doing and make a change for the better. Your wedding is canceled, you pile of garbage. <laughs> you don't have to tell me things like that, right? What are you trying to say that I did? What's wrong with me calling you ugly all the time? Well, then never ask me for money again. And don't bother with me handling your wedding for you anymore. I don't want to be around people that think it's okay to call others ugly. All you've done is made me feel as though I've wasted a lot of my time and money now. And I don't want that kind of relation with you anymore. 
So give me back my money and let your wedding be cancelled. Are you really that upset with me? Oh, come on now! <laughs> you forget that you pushed me into a fountain full of cold water? It'd be scary if you did manage to forget that so easily. Not only that, but you also have been calling me ugly forever now. And you made that your reason for kicking me out of the wedding. But seriously, you pushing me into that fountain because of my looks was the last straw for me. I'm not going to ever forgive you for that, and things between you and I are, are over. I am not coming back to your demolished wedding. I've already told everyone there that the wedding is cancelled, and they got into work on taking it all down. And I plan to tell my husband everything about what happened between you and I. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean you plan to tell him everything? What the heck do you plan on telling him? I'll tell him about how you pushed me into the water and then kicked me out of your wedding? And of course, about all the other things you've said to me. I didn't want to tell him about us before either, because like you, I didn't want him worrying about us. You also told me to never tell him anything, and had you just let me be at your wedding, I never would have planned on telling him. But now things have changed, and I've had enough! After this, I'm cutting ties with you! Isn't that just fantastic for you? That's not fantastic at all. And about my brother, he wouldn't stop talking about you any time he was around me. It was disgusting, and he was supposed to be my precious little brother, but you stole him from me. But there is a limit to how far you can take that hate you had stored up for me. I know that. I can see now that what I did was not right. You could say that I was just getting frustrated is all. I was hoping that at some point, you'd leave my brother because of me. We are married now, but all you could think of was having us divorce? I'm sorry, but him and I have never thought about divorce. But now that you've said that about us, I'm going to leave you for good. Is that okay with you? But if you leave me now, then what will happen to my wedding? Well, it'll stay cancelled, won't it? You'll have to start from step one again and look for a new place to have your wedding at. But if you give me all my money back, I might rethink things. That's screwed up, Ava. You and I are family, right? Don't you think you can cut that sort of crap with me since we're pretty much sisters? You're supposed to love and help your family, right? I'm starting to feel that you have some sort of short-term memory loss that's at the bottom of all this. I'm sorry, but I cannot be asked with you anymore. I just don't get what is going on in that head of yours, and I don't want to anymore. So go right ahead and say whatever you'd like about me. I've told your husband now that your wedding is permanently cancelled. And this might be the end of your marriage to him now as well. Don't say those terrible things. Don't just throw me away. If my wedding really does end up being cancelled today, I'll be causing a lot of problems for my parents, right? Are you happy letting those problems affect my parents? I'm not happy about it, but I've already explained what happened to them as well. Huh? There were some people that watched you push me into the fountain. And your parents have already apologized to me for that. And after talking with Drew, he agrees that the both of us should cut ties with you for good. You told Drew already? How much further are you planning to take all of this? I'm not taking this any farther than you already have. You're the one that started all of this, and you're the one that brought it all to this point! This is great, right? You'll never have to see your ugly sister-in-law again. <laughs> I'm glad about this myself. I'm finally able to say goodbye to one of the most heartless and gross women I've ever had the misfortune of calling family. Now, have a wonderful life with your husband. <laughs> In the end, the wedding was officially canceled and taken apart. Evelyn's husband ended up being furious and she was forced to apologize to both him and all of his family members that had traveled to see the wedding. And it seems that now, even their marriage is on the line. Drew was in shock over what his sister had done, and after talking with his parents about what to do about her, they all agreed to cut ties to her. Also... The money that Evelyn still had to repay Ava and the cost of the dress that she ruined by pushing her into the water were both to be paid in a settlement that Ava made. But Evelyn had been thrown out by everyone, and she tried her hardest to apologize to Ava. However, Ava ended up blocking her and told her lawyer to make sure that money was repaid before the end of the month. I'm sure that will be hard for Evelyn to deal with now, but perhaps it's time she takes a loan to repay Ava and then changes her rotten character into something a bit more acceptable before trying to get back out there and working to pay off the loan. Just how long are you going to keep living off of my parents, huh? What is the matter with you? 
Don't you have any shame or pride in yourself? How can you just keep living this way? Are you just never going to stop until you drained every single penny from my poor parents' bank accounts? Do you really think that just because you're my brother's wife that you can get away with taking advantage of my family like this? Well, I'm not going to stand for it. Do you hear me? Amanda! It is just so lovely to hear from you. A real treat every single time. I see that you're still going on about this nonsense of me taking advantage of your parents. But as I've already told you over and over again, I am no leech. So, can we please just drop this whole thing already? Well, of course a leech wouldn't think of themselves as a leech. They would think they're just going about their everyday lives while they suck everything from everyone around them. But just who told you that you were allowed to move into the condo with my parents, huh? You do know that they own that building, and you have no right to be there, do you? I'm really sorry, Amanda, but I think you must be mistaken about that condo. I mean, you do know that it's my name on the lease for it, don't you? So, basically, that apartment belongs to me, and we're all living in it. Does that make sense to you? You think I care if some stupid piece of paper has your stupid signature on it? None of that matters at all if you're making my parents pay the rent on that place. Does that make sense to you? But I'm not making your parents pay for the rent, so I'm not sure what you're talking about at all when you say that. You really have some nerve trying to brag to be about living in such a nice place when you're not even the one who's paying for it, you little rat. I know for a fact that your entire life is being bankrolled by my parents, and I'm not going to stand for it. I won't see you drain my parents of their savings because that's my inheritance. Amanda, what is the point of this conversation? What are you trying to say? Because you're really just not making any sense at all. I mean, Brendan and I both have full-time jobs that we work very hard at. There's just no truth to these claims for leeching. At all. So, I really just want to know what is going to make you happy, or at the very least, Stop sending messages like this to me and accusing me of things I'm not doing. You want to know what I want? Fine, I'll tell you what I want. I want you and Brendan to move out of the condo and let me and my husband take your place. That's what would make me happy. Really? Is that really what you want to happen to solve this? Even after you've spent years barely even talking to your parents? I don't understand. Why are you suddenly wanting to move in with them now? Did something happen? Do you need some kind of assistance? Oh, shut up. I wouldn't accept help from you if we were the last two people on Earth. I just wanted to be there for my parents now, that they're getting up there in age. Is that really so bad? I just can't help but think that they must need some assistance living in that giant condo all by themselves. That's why it would be best if my hubby and I moved in and took your place. My husband is already on board, so you might as well just say yes and move out. Well, first of all, your parents literally do not live alone. Brendan and I also live in this condo, as you well know. But I still don't understand why you think you and your family would be able to move in with us. I know this place is big and all, but I think we're already at maximum capacity with the four of us. And I just can't see six people sharing this space comfortably. Sharing? What on earth are you talking about? Do you really think that I would ever want to live with you? Sorry, then what are you talking about? What is it exactly that you want from me? I want you and my no-good nerdy brother to move out of that condo so that my husband and I can move in. I already made that very clear in other messages. I'm ordering you to move out right now. Do you understand me? But I thought I already explained to you that I own the condo. The lease is under my name and everything. So, I don't understand why you would want us to move out. I already told you that I don't care whose stupid signature is on what stupid paper. You're living with my parents, and as her actual child, I have the right to demand to live with my mom. Over you. You're just standing in the way and being obstructionist at this point, so just leave us alone already. So, I guess you're just going to completely ignore the fact that your brother is also here and living with your parents then? And if you really think that we're such awful people to be around your parents, why don't you go and ask your mom herself what she wants? I mean, they were the ones that moved into the condo with us, I'll have you know. Oh, I will go and ask her. You can count on that, Tracy. 
But in the meantime, you and Brendan should pack your bags and get ready to leave. So, you're really serious about this then? You're really going to try and kick Brendan and I out of our own condo? I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, it's clear that you haven't even talked to your parents about any of this. Maybe you should do that first before jumping the gun like this. What the heck is the matter with you? I told you that I wanted you out by the end of the week and you're still here? You must have really been trying to piss me off. I guess that explains why I slapped you right on your stupid face. Are you sure that you don't mean to be apologizing to me right now? I mean, seriously, Amanda, have you lost your mind or something? Why on earth would you do something like this? What is the matter with you? Oh, shut up, you sore loser. I told you and Brendan to be out of the condo by now and you weren't. You had plenty of warning, so don't act so shocked about this. And what about these boxes that you've left here at that condo? Are you going to come and get them or shall I just chuck them all in the garbage? Amanda, you are seriously going to regret doing this. I don't think that you understand the mistake that you're making. I mean, you clearly had no clue that it was Brendan and I, mostly me, that were letting your parents stay with us out of the kindness of our hearts. But you seriously hit me to get me out of my own home. You are not going to live this down and I will make sure that you pay for this. Oh, please. You think I care what some little leech thinks about what I've done? You two can just disappear for all I care. Now this condo is all mine. And we deserve it much more than you do. After all, you were just leeching off my mom and my dad, using them like your purse and piggy bank. But I talked to my dad and he said it was fine if we move in. I'm wondering if you've heard the saying, pride comes before the fall? In this... I think it's more idiocy than pride, but it can be hard to tell with you. I mean, you really just don't know when to quit, and now you've gone and made a real mess of things for everyone. There you go. Now the real you starts to come out. You know that people only resort to name-calling when they have nothing of value to add to a conversation. And besides, don't go acting as if you weren't trying to steal my family's home around from them. I was only doing what I had to do to protect my parents from horrible people like you and my brother. So just shut up, accept that you've lost, go and never come back, and take my stupid brother with you. If insulting people means that you have nothing to add to a conversation, then that certainly explains every message you've ever sent to me. I seriously can't deal with you when you act like this. You are just being totally unreasonable and I can't stand it. Oh, just give it a rest already, would you? You've lost, don't you see that? I won, the condo is mine, my parents are safe, and all is right with the world. Now my husband and I are going to live with and take care of my parents, and you two are never ever going to bother any of us again. Alright then, I hope that you all have a nice life. And don't ever let me catch your ugly muck sulking around this building either, you got it? Okay then, I understand. But if you're doing this, then there is some business that we need to attend to. Of course, I still haven't forgiven you for this or for hitting me in the face. But there is some paperwork we need to take care of. Like changing the name on the lease. <laughs> okay then, it's all done. I talked to the leasing company, explained the situation, and that should be the end of it. Enjoy living in your new condo, Amanda. It's about damn time you got back to me. Could you have moved any slower? You really are useless if I took you that long to change some names on a form. It really is a good thing that I'm kicking you out now. Who knows what damage you might have caused. Well, does it feel good? Do you think you've won now? Are you glad that your brother and I are finally moving out? Because Brendan and I couldn't be happier to finally be rid of that place. Oh, please. You think I'm really going to buy that you're happy and that I was able to steal your home away from you? Try less harder. I mean, you two are homeless now. You have nowhere to go, and I've taken everything from you. What could you and my stupid brother possibly be so happy about? Oh, Amanda! I think you're mistaken again. Brendan and I aren't going to be homeless at all. We've been living in a hotel and we'll keep doing so this week while we arrange all of our stuff for the move. I told you over and over again that Brendan and I both work full-time jobs. And we have quite a bit of mast and savings now. Not to mention the fact that I'm going to be charging you a prorated fee for the time that you'll be in the apartment, as well as for the down payment and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs>
You really expect me to pay you a single cent? Why on earth would I ever do that? Well, because in all those documents I sent you to sign, your husband signed a deal agreeing to pay all of this. So, I'm afraid you can't run from this one. Wait, what? You can't be serious. We're not going to pay anything that you didn't already explain to us that we'd have to pay beforehand. That's just ridiculous. It's particularly theft. I'm sorry, but it really isn't my fault at all if you or your husband just signed those papers without reading through what they said. But anyways, you've already signed them and they've already been officiated, so there really isn't anything you can do about it. And then, once you've paid Brendan and I what you owe us, we'll agree to never ever talk to you again. Which means that we expect to never hear from you either. Whatever, I don't care about anything you and my lousy brother have to say. We would never even want to talk to you again anyways, and besides, we still have this condo all to ourselves. I seriously doubt that whatever we owe you is even going to be that much, so we'll pay for it for no reason than to finally be rid of you. Alright then, if you pay us what you owe us, then we'll be out of your hair and you'll never have to deal with us again. That is what you want, isn't it? You know darn well that's exactly what I want. Not only was I able to save my parents from being in the clutches of horrible vampires such as yourself, but now I finally get to live with my parents. You know, you keep calling me a parasite and accusing Brendan and I of leeching off of your parents. But I think that you and your husband are going to be the real leeches. Say whatever you want, you sore loser. It isn't going to change the fact that I have a condo and you don't and you're clearly just jealous of that fact. Great, right. well, think what you want. I really don't care. I hope that this all turns out the way that you want it to. Good luck with everything! And never ever contact us again, okay? I was just about to tell you the same thing about not contacting me. I really don't care at all how you and Brendan's life end up, really. Right, well, I guess I'm just wondering how you two are going to afford to pay rent on that place next month. After all, it was not cheap to live in that place, but I'm sure that you'll all figure it out. Good luck! Whoa, 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 what? What is that supposed to mean? Is that some kind of joke? Nope, I'm very serious. You'll have to pay to keep living there. It's kind of how these things work. Anyways, we're still busy with moving stuff here, so I've got to go. See ya! Tracy, what is the meaning of this, huh? I mean, how could this happen? You need to explain to me what is going on right this instant. Oh, Amanda! That's so funny hearing from you so soon. I thought you said that you were never ever going to reach out to us ever again. I wonder what this could be about. What seems to be on your mind? And please make it quick. I really don't have the time to talk to someone like you. We can't afford the rent on this place and things are falling apart here fast. We even asked my parents to pay, but they said that they don't have any money in their bank accounts. Well, yeah, I knew that already. But anyway, what is it that you wanted to talk to me about? Unless... No, Amanda. Say it isn't so. Don't tell me that you didn't know your parents were penniless. Wait a second. You know that my parents didn't have any money in their bank accounts? Of course I did. Why do you think that I was the only one paying for everything up until about a month ago? They certainly couldn't afford to do it. But that's... Wait, what? Are you kidding me? So they really don't have any money at all? That's what I'm telling you. Your parents don't have any money that I wasn't giving them. In fact, both of your parents were in so much debt that they had to sell their old house. That's when they had to reach out to Brendan and I and ask if they would live with us. They sold their house because they were in debt? But I had no idea about that. Why didn't I know about it? Probably because you never showed any interest in your parents until you thought you could use them to steal my condo from me. But it's all true. They couldn't afford to live in their own place, and so they begged us to let them move in. And we said yes. But then, how am I supposed to be this month's rent? I certainly can't afford a place like this. Tracy, what if you moved back in with all of us and then you could go back to paying how you used to? <laughs> you can't be serious about that, right? <laughs> you really think that I would ever move back in there and live with you guys again? No. Brandon and I already told you that we never wanted to hear from any of you ever again. 
We've already bought our own new condo and we don't want anything else to do with any of you as long as we live. Do you understand? Hold on a second. You and my brother bought a new condo together? But I just... I don't believe it. How could you do that to me? To you? This has nothing to do with you at all. We just needed a place to live since someone kicked us out of our old place. But I had no idea that my parents didn't have any money. How could I have even know that? You should have told me about this before you let me kick you out. Oh, please, Amanda. I told you time and time again that you should really talk to your parents about this. But you just wouldn't listen. Besides, do you really want me to feel bad for you after you slapped me in the face and stole our condo? This can't be happening. Things weren't supposed to be like this. I don't know what to do. I tried to tell you that Brendan and I were not the so-called parasites that you thought we were. If anyone was living off of anyone, it was your parents off of us. We were paying for every little thing at that place. But that isn't fair. I thought that you were just trying to brag about your money so that you could scare me away from taking over your condo. You should have done more to convince me that this was a bad idea. This is all your fault. We were so happy to get to live in this huge place because we thought it was going to be free. But it's not like that at all. How could you do this to us? You betrayed us. Betrayed you? Please do not tell me that you're trying to make yourself out to be the victim here. I am not going to stand for that for one second. It isn't fair though. I thought that my parents were going to pay for everything and that I wouldn't have to worry about anything after we moved in here. Please tell me you're not serious about that. I mean, how old are you? some kid who gets an allowance from their parents anymore? You're an adult and you should know how to live within your means. Although, I can't say that I entirely blame you for not knowing how to save money, given the fact that your parents clearly didn't know how to do that either. But if you thought you wouldn't have to pay for anything, then you've just been delusional this whole time. But I just wanted my parents to pay for things. Repeating it isn't going to make it happen. You do realize that, right? Saying that you want your parents to pay for everything isn't going to change the fact that they don't have any money. Brendan and I wanted to live in that condo where you all are at for so long. We waited. And waited. And waited on a list for vacancies, and then we were finally able to secure one. And then, not only your parents, but then you and your husband came and took it all away from us. But I've already signed over the condo to your husband. So it's your problem now. What do you mean you signed it over to him? That doesn't make any sense. When did this happen? Last month, Amanda. It happened last month when I sent that paperwork for you to sign. Did you really not read any of it? Well, I kind of more just skimmed over the first page of all the different stacks, but I thought that was where all of the most important information was. All right, then. That's fine if you did that. But it doesn't change the fact that you basically did this to yourself then. And I don't see any reason why I should give you anything or show any mercy because you were too stupid to not read a contract you signed. But I didn't know that things were going to go like this. I would have never agreed to anything if I knew this was going to happen. And what do you want me to do about it now? The documents are signed, everything is official, that's that. But my husband and I have debt of our own and a lot of it. There's no way that we could ever afford this place and make payments on it. Ah, <sighs> so what all of this is about. I had a sneaking suspicion that you might have owed money and that that was what this was about. You mean you knew this whole time that we were also in financial trouble? Well, I did think it was weird that you two didn't own a home at all and that you were so eager to move in with your parents when you thought they were paying rent. It was just a guess of mine. But now I know that it's true. But I still don't know what I should do. How do I get out of this mess now? Well, one thing you could do is to look through the copies of the documents that I sent you. I think you'll see that if you fail to pay the rent, they will make a payment plan using your salary and take up to half of it while keeping a running tab for you that you'll have to pay at the end of the year. But how much do I owe the building already? Well, given that you two are technically new entrants, you have to pay the entry fee. Plus the space, of course. I think you're looking at around $10,000? $10,000? Are you kidding me? I don't have that kind of money. Well, you better come up with it soon or else your debt is only going to go up. 
Oh, and by the way, the building does add interest onto the running tab that they'll keep for you. Anyways, have a nice life. I'm going to block you after this, and then Brendan and I are never going to have to worry about you or your parents ever again. Wait, you're going to block me? You can't do that. Please, you have to help me. You can't just leave. <laughs> I didn't block Amanda for a while after that, just to see what she would send me. She kept begging for help and for me to give her Brendan and I's new address. But I was never ever going to do that. It was long afterwards that I blocked her. I heard from some old neighbors in the building that loud fights could be heard from our old unit and that by the end of the month, they saw Amanda and her family packing up their boxes and moving out of the condo. I have no idea where they all are now or what they're going to do about their debt. But quite frankly, I don't really care. Hey, I just got a call a few minutes ago. Did I hear them correctly when they said you fell down the stairs and ended up with multiple broken bones? You heard them correctly. Right now, I'm in a really bad shape, and my whole body is in horrible pain. I'd really love it if you could bring some things from home to the hospital while I'm here. I never thought you'd end up all screwed up like that. How embarrassing for you and me now. Huh? I'm sure the reason you fell down those stairs is because like every time you were dozing off while walking and didn't even see the steps in front of you. And because of you daydreaming like that, you fell down those stairs and hurt yourself. I'm sure that doctor was lying to me when he said that you're badly hurt and have all those breaks. No way that could happen to someone by falling down a couple steps. Are you not embarrassed by how this all happened to you? Wait, why would I be embarrassed by what's happened to me? This has nothing to do with me dozing off and falling because of that. Are you not even worried about the condition I'm in right now? Worried? What should I be worried about right now? You should be able to get right back to work after this, right? I'm not asking you to be worried about me getting back to work or not. I'm asking if you're worried about the fact that I just broke a ton of my bones and will need surgery to fix a few of them. Don't you think you could be a little bit more considerate of my condition at the moment? It's going to take me around two months at the very least to get through most of my recovery here. And so there's no way that before the end of those two months, I'll be back to work. What? So you're telling me you won't be going back to the office for a whole two months now? My god. You are the least helpful person ever, Mike. I feel so bad for the people that are going to still have to hand you some form of pay while you're out of work. Can you please not say things like that to me now? I didn't end up this way because I wanted to be injured or anything. I'm not that kind of person, and I really want you to understand that what's happened to me was an accident. So please start talking about what's happened to me in a lighter tone. At this time, I'm in a tough place mentally and hearing you speak horribly of me makes me come even closer to breaking down. I'm not sure what you're going on about. I hope that after this accident, you learn just how useless you really are to not only the company that you work for, but also to your family back at home. I knew for a long time now that you've been a waste of the company's payroll, but aren't you embarrassed by the fact that you won't be back to work for a whole two months now? You need to see just how much of a fool you look like right now. I swear to God, you are such an idiot. Not even my boss talks to me like that about my position within the company, Angela. I never expected someone like you to talk to me in that way, actually. Wait a second. Do you not even plan to come back home for the next two months then? Um, I have to be very relaxed while I'm going through my recovery phase. And so the plan was to keep me in the hospital for two months while healing from the surgery. And also while having myself tied up in the bed here. My god, then what's going to be done about all the housework at home? Are you expecting that I do all the cleaning and laundry here for the next two frickin' months? There is no way that's happening, Mike. Just because you're useless and can't help our family doesn't mean that I need to pick up the slack and do all the work now. Are you kidding me? You don't even have a job right now, Angela. You said to me that the trade-off for leaving your job is that you'd take care of all the cleaning and chores like that while I work. So I think it's totally fair that you have to do all those things for a few months while I'm here recovering. I can't come home right now as I'm not able to move out of this bed, 
and so you, can you please be the one to do all the chores? Besides, I won't be around the house much for a bit, so you won't even have to clean things as often as we normally have been. Jesus, that is going to be a total pain in my butt, you know. Ugh. It's because I have to hold on to a useless husband like you that my whole life has been nothing but frickin' miserable. I hate this. Why do you think I'd ever want to give up my free time to do all the chores in the house? I don't care that you broke some bones, Mike. Are you really saying this all to me right now? I'm telling you that I never planned on breaking a lot of my bones and becoming immobilized like this. Right now, I feel the same way you do. Miserable. Well, I don't give a crap about you being miserable right now. You're the only one to blame for falling down those stairs, and so you don't get the right to sit there and feel sad for yourself. Right now, you've caused a whole lot of trouble for all those around you. You should be telling every single person that you've affected that you're sorry for being alive still and having to put more weight onto their shoulders. Angela, you should know that you're being a little too overwhelming right now. For the time, just be aware that I'll be staying at the hospital in the center of town. I ask that you please stop by sometime soon and drop off some things for me. Books, games, anything that will keep me entertained while I'm laid up in bed for two months. Huh? You actually expect me to go there and see you now? <laughs> huh? Why don't you ask your mom to bring some things for you? That lady is always free, right? <laughs> Please do not act that way towards me, Angela. It is not appropriate right now. And as for my mom, she's not going to be able to come to this hospital as easily as you can. She would also have to drive over to our house to get my things and then drive another direction to get here. That's too much to ask from her. With you, all you have to do is drive 30 minutes to the hospital and hand me some things. Is that too much to ask? I have a lot of things keeping me busy. Unlike you and your mom, I don't have the time to be running things back and forth from this house to you. Are you kidding? So you're really not going to bring me anything? Let alone come and see me here? Ask someone else to come and visit you with all your things. I don't have time for such tedious things as that. Now I am a busy woman and I have to get back to my life. Make sure to stop trying to text or call me now, okay? I need all the quiet time I can get right now to start thinking about just how useless of a husband you are and what I'm going to have to do about you. What are you saying, Angela? Do you really not want to listen to what the man you married has to say? I'm serious, Angela. Why are you acting this cold to me now? Angela. Today I'm getting out of this hospital. You really didn't even come one time to see me there while I was recovering, did you? Not even after the surgeries I ended up going through. I'm finally going to be coming back home now, but are you even still there? I have something very serious that I'd like to talk to you about, so it'll help to do it in person. Ah, I made sure to fill out most of the divorce paperwork and leave it on the table for you when you get back. What? Your daughter and wife have moved out of that house now. I have no use for a husband that cannot work anymore, and so I want the two of us to part ways for good. You have not even showed me an ounce of care after my accident. And now this? Well, thank God I got used to never seeing you for the past two months. And are you serious about having filled out divorce paperwork for us? And also about already have moved out of the house with our daughter? I'm telling the truth, Mike. <laughs> And why wouldn't I have done all of this? You were a huge thorn in my side even before you fell down those stairs, but after that, I couldn't imagine another day where you were my husband. I don't need myself a man who's just going to sit in the hospital for two months and tell his family to handle all the housework while he's gone. <laughs> Your daughter and I are out of that house now, so go ahead and hand in that paperwork for me, please. For crying out loud, thank you! Now you're going to try and hide your true feelings? <laughs> No, I'm actually really thankful. I could never be happier than I am now. I'll make sure to stroll over to the city office today and hand them all those papers with a huge smile on my face. I will finally be back to the life I had before, freed from my chains. Huh? What's up with you now? Why are you acting all joyful to hear this from me? I understand that you're probably just trying to act all tough and hide your emotions, but come on now, Mike. You're sounding like a madman now. <laughs> I know for a fact that deep inside you are crying for me to come back to you. To tell you the truth, that whole time I sat in the hospital recovering, 
You nor my daughter ever came to see me. That gave me a chance to really think about the life I had with you both. So now that you're saying that you're both leaving me, I feel like that nothing's actually changed for me. If anything, I was a bit worried to come back home to you both being there. So this had lifted that fear off my back. I was a bit depressed thinking that I'd be going back to two people who don't even care about me, and would rather see me waste my life working away in order to keep them fed and under a roof. Depressed? Why would someone like you be depressed by that when you're only just good enough to make money for us here? Tell me, Angela, who's the actual person here that's useless and a waste? Excuse me? You promised me that after you quit your job a long time ago, that you'd become a housewife and get all the chores and cookie done, but that never turned out to be the case with you. Instead, both you and Sid would just sit around all day, and the moment I got home from work would start going off on me saying that I need to get everything in the house done. Did you know that the reason for me falling down those stairs wasn't due to me dozing off at work? It was due to the fact that I was so exhausted from having to do so much at home for you two that I passed out the moment I got to the office and stumbled down three flights of stairs. Yet you never wanted to listen to the real reason for all of that. You can say whatever you want to say about why you fell down those stairs, but I will not allow you to blame me for your incompetence. I remember how you'd also go off on me about how my job didn't pay enough and that it was because I sucked at it and needed to try harder. You'd also tell me to start working overtime so that I could make more for the family. But when I'd receive that in my next paycheck, you'd tell me it's not enough and that there's no reason for me to be staying late at work. It was always one thing or another with you, and no matter how hard I tried to make you happy, you never seemed to care. I even remember those days I'd stay late to make extra money, and when I got home, you'd ask me where dinner was and why I hadn't started making it yet. And not just that, but then follow that up by yelling at me for not having any of the chores done yet. I'm being honest when I say that I was at my limit. And so having you tell me that you want a divorce now is the best news that I've received in such a long time. <laughs> I can see that you keep blaming that all on me, but you know it's actually because you're a waste, right? Say whatever makes you happy, Angela. I'm going to divorce you now, and I'd rather not listen to you complain about me anymore. I'll finally be free, so don't expect me to back down now. You're free now? <laughs> you have neither a job nor any money anymore, so what freedom will you possibly have? You're never going to be free now because you have no money to spend. <laughs> you are a waste to this world, and that's why you've been thrown away by both your daughter and your wife. I've been thrown away. You really view it that way? Excuse me? I'm sure that the only ones who will be in trouble after throwing me away will be the two of you. But, well, whatever life you have after this, do your best with it. I'm going to have that divorce paperwork handed in by the end of the day. So go ahead and live your lives however you like. You don't have to tell me that, Mike. <laughs> and as for you, good luck getting through the hell you've been gifted. And of course, you and I won't be family anymore, so don't come crawling back to us crying for our help. There wouldn't be anything in helping you for us anyway, since you have no money now. I see. Well, whatever you think of me doesn't matter anymore. Just be glad that I'm not going to try and get any sort of revenge on you two after what you've done to me. I am being very clear with you that I am the happiest I felt in a long time. Thank you so much for leaving my house for me. Is that so? It's disturbing to hear you say you're happy after something like this, but oh well. Goodbye forever, you frickin' loser. There is one thing I forgot to mention to you, though. I know every little thing about how you've been cheating on me with another man. Huh? Cheating on you? What do you mean? Have you gone completely off the deep end now? Because what you're saying to me makes zero sense. I'm sure it makes a bit more than zero sense to you. <laughs> Did you think you could keep all your activities with him hidden from someone like me? I know for a fact that you've been with that other guy for a very long time now. And, as a cherry on top, I have evidence of it all. What are you talking about? Are you just trying to make things up now so that you feel better about being divorced? Why would I be making something like this up with you? <laughs> as of right now, 
I'm not the one losing this battle we have between us. If that's what you want to make all of this, then go ahead and do so. But I think that I'm anything but the loser right now. And that's because I'm not going to lose. <laughs> You're just trying to make me get all worked up now, aren't you? There's no way you'd ever figure out something like that when you've been cooped up in that hospital for the past two months. Don't get so carried away with thoughts like that. I told you that I don't have any intention of getting revenge, because I'm actually quite happy with us getting divorced. And tomorrow, I'm going to have all the locks to my house changed, just to be safe. Wouldn't want any chance of you getting back into my house to be there. Huh? You're going that far? A lot of my things are still in that house, Mike. I'll make sure to put them all in the trash outside for you, so don't worry about those. You told me that you guys have already left for good, so there's no reason for me to keep your things here, right? If you actually still needed any of this jewelry or clothing, you would have packed them up and took them when leaving as well, right? Allow me to make this crystal clear for you. I do not want you or Sid coming back to my house. But be aware that I will be talking with a lawyer about how you've been cheating on me, and I'll make sure that there's a settlement that you have to pay me. Huh? You want me to pay you a settlement? You understand that I don't have a job right now, right? Oh, I do know that very well, Angela. And not only am I aware of you cheating on me, but I also saw that letter you attached to the divorce papers saying that you want half of all my properties in the divorce. But thinking that you'll be getting anything from me in the divorce is a bit too generous after what you've done. How about instead of acting as though you won this battle against me, you open up your eyes a little bit more and see the reality of your cracking situation. Why should I have to give you anything of mine in this divorce? When it's you who have been without a job for years now and have been cheating on me with another man behind my back. Had you done nothing besides ask for the divorce, you probably could have gotten half my things. But you went as far as cheating on me, right? I am not cheating on you. Stop trying to paint weird pictures of me in your head, okay? These are not false accusations that I'm making of you though, Angela. I already have solid evidence of you cheating on me, so it's no use trying to run from me now. It's better that you just embrace the truth now, so that you don't have to overwork yourself trying to live a lie. Anyway, I'm going to have a lawyer with me here soon, so running away is not going to be an option anymore. <laughs> are you seriously getting yourself a lawyer now? Do you really think what's happening between us requires someone like them to be around? This is all supposed to be between us and not have anything to do with strangers. Mike, there is really no reason for you to go that far, right? We have been together for over 20 years now, meaning that there should be no hard feelings after something like this. Have you forgotten how much I loved you all that time? Hmm? What are you trying to say to me now? We've been together for over 20 years. That's a pretty dang long time, and us having to divorce now is something that normally happens to any couple after this long. Let's just continue to be kind to one another and end things between us without creating such a mess. Why are you trying to backtrack now saying that you want all of this to end neatly? <laughs> you were the one that forced me to go day by day with loads of stress in my life, while cheating on me in the background. And while I was in the hospital recovering from multiple broken bones, which I'm still having to deal with by the way, you filled out divorce papers and left the house with my daughter. You've made it pretty clear that you never wanted things to be neat when leaving me. <laughs> and understand that I'm going to be generous by going through with this divorce. As that's what you've been so desperately wanted, right? But I will make sure that you pay me for all that time of mine you wasted. Having a relationship with another man. And as I'm aware, the man you've been going out with secretly doesn't have a ton of money himself. So he might end up throwing you away when he finds out about me and my plans. <laughs> you even began to look into him? I have not been going out with him though. He is just a very close friend of mine. Oh, he's just a friend now, is he? <laughs> well, just to make everyone aware of this, I'll have the evidence of you both sleeping together sent to your parents' house. What? Why would you send it all to their house? Why? 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 This is all being done to ensure that you don't lie to your parents about the real reason behind this divorce. And so that they understand the real woman you are. 
It's insane that you thought after pulling a stunt like that, that you'd be getting any part of my properties in the divorce. Well, that's really never going to happen for you. And all you'll be getting now is a court notice stating that you owe me money in the divorce. And I'm betting that you're going to have a hard time getting back out there and finding a job for yourself after spending so long being a fake housewife for me. Why are you talking to me like you're going to come out on top? You're in the same boat as me right now, jerk. You don't have a job anymore yourself and all your money is tied up paying for your medical bills. Huh? Why do you think that I'm without a job right now? <laughs> you haven't been able to show up to work for the past two months, so your boss has fired you by this point, right? That's the whole reason I threw you away. I was not going to stay together with a man who thinks it's okay to just slack off for two whole months and not care about his job that made money for all of us. Well, I was never fired from that job, Angela. Huh? I have never been slacking off, and I don't even understand how you got that idea of me in the first place. I told you that I was in a major accident at work, and that it would take me two months to recover from it. And that's just the time required for me to heal from the breaks themselves. I'm still going to be going to physical therapy for the next year or so to help me get back to the amount of mobility I had before. But I'm sure you never would have known about my condition or about how I plan to get back to normal since you never came to see me in a hospital. What do you mean you haven't been fired yet? How the hell could that be? I was given sick leave for a month and a half so that I could recover in the hospital. But I only used a month of it because after that first month, I got use of my left hand again. And so my boss was kind enough to allow me to work remotely which I've been doing now for a month and will continue to do so as I stay in physical therapy. Therefore, I have not been fired from my job. I was hurt on the job, so they could never fire me for something like that anyways. I sure think you're a bit screwed in the head though for not ever coming to see me in a hospital, and for the fact that you continue to verbally abuse me for my injuries. But thank God I had been wanting to divorce you as well, so this is a win for both of us. Now, you and your daughter do your best with that man you've been cheating on me with, okay? <laughs> and don't forget that I plan to take a good amount of your money in this divorce. Mike, why are you not going to answer your phone? I even came all the way back to your house, but it doesn't even look like you're there anymore. And I can't even get into the house anymore because you changed the dang locks on me. What the hell do you think you're doing trying to play hide-and-seek with me? Why are you coming back to talk to me again? And another question, why would I allow a stranger to come into my home without a good reason? Calling me a stranger now? What is wrong with you, Mike? Huh? How is that wrong of me? Right now I'm in a very bad place and need help. And it's made me see that I actually want to get back together with you again, Mike. Are you sure you don't feel that way about us now? Because your boyfriend ran away from you after hearing about the amount of money I'd be taking from both of you? <laughs> Don't you feel a little bit sorry for me, though? Even Sid has turned a cold shoulder to me and said that she's going to live on her own now. So I have nobody left to love me and call family. I want to go to see my boyfriend and talk this all through with him, but he'd never listen to me now. And as for my parents, well... They're very pissed at me for what I did to you and everyone and told me to never come to their house again. And so I just want to come back to you now and live with you again. It's the easiest option for me at this point in time. So can you please start taking care of me and let me back into your life? I'm laughing my butt off right now at how naive you're acting. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's going to have to be a fat no for me. <laughs> huh? I don't have the mental strength anymore to deal with a freaking idiot any longer in my life, so no. Have you not noticed that the whole reason your life really sucks right now is because of all the things you did to me? It makes no sense for you to come back to the person you hurt and ask for them to let you back into their life. Now, go back to suffering in that hell you've created for yourself, please. <laughs> I am a complete stranger to you now, so never, ever come around me again. And I'm sorry for being a useless and jobless husband back then. <laughs> and just as what has been expected, Angela was not able to get any sort of help from anyone she knew, and was left stranded with nowhere to go 
and nothing to do. I'm guessing that since she's still gotta pay off the settlement I asked from her, that she'll be working odd jobs for a long while now, and realize just how cruel life is when you've slacked off for many, many years. I have still stayed in touch with her parents though, as they were really good friends with me, even before we had gotten married and had Sid, and they still tell me that every so often they hear her crying at their front door in near silence, hoping that one day they'll open the door and let her in. But what she doesn't know is that they're planning to have a large fence installed around their house, and so she won't get many more chances to be under the awning of their house. <laughs> As for Sid, I haven't heard from her again since the day before my accident, and I don't expect to, but she never ended up blocking me on Instagram. So from time to time, I'm able to see her post, and see that she's found a man of her own now to get close with. It seems those two will get married soon. But I'm never going to need to bother with her anyways. It's just good to know that she got away from her crazy mom as well, and is doing alright with someone else now. I bet you that Angela really does regret ever cheating on me and then leaving me the way she did. But as for me, I'm more relaxed now and have a whole new life to live where I could do what I want and not be criticized for it. It'll be a while yet until she's fully paid every penny to me that I've asked for. But I'm in no hurry for the money, as I still have my job to give me a decent income. If anything, seeing her pay me a little at a time each month keeps me updated that she's still somewhere out there, trying to survive on the streets. 